Hey everyone and welcome to Stitch Rick Creations. In this video we're going to be using these lovely resources Insanely Creates sent me as part of our Candyland swap box. Now if you want to see what's in the box, what's in the box, please go and check out my video that I posted recently with all the unboxing. You can also see links below for all the different collaborators within this collab. For this collab we're going to use some Cave Club dolls. I've never used these before but they were in my local Sainsbury's for £4 each so I couldn't resist. Now I'm used to using secondhand dolls and so the cleanup isn't as intense as this but I thought I'd go through a brand new doll and how to clean it up effectively. Uh, everything is held in with those little plastic clippy things which are really annoying to get out. I'm tying off the hair here to make sure that I can keep it just in case I need some neon pink hair for a future project. I give both dolls a buzz cut and try and snip it down as close as I can to the scalp. Ta-da! Now they're all nicely shaven down, I'm going to use some 100% acetone and get as much of this face off as I possibly can before boiling them. With their faces cleaned up, we can start the spa treatment. This softens the vinyl head, means I can take them off the neck peg without splitting the neck peg, but these neck pegs are solid, which was interesting and unexpected, and it usually softens the glue. Now, I can't get in with my needle nose pliers, so I need to find my little screwdriver. Stabby stabby. I wiggle the screwdriver around inside the head and it pulls out all the hair plugs from the inside. I'll then be using a needle nose plier or in this case I had to cut the back of the head open because the neck hole was too small for my needle nose pliers. So we had to scoop it out some other way. The hair was melted in rather than glued in, so it was really easy to get out and less messy. Bonus! I'm going to use some super glue and hold those shut until it's stuck, and then I can get on with the rest of it. I want to give these two pixie ears, so we're going to put some holes in their ears. Don't try this at home, this wasn't the safest thing to do, but um, yeah, use a vice. I'm going to put some armature wire in there, snip it off at the right length and then I'm going to be using my good old friend epoxy sculpt to make the ears. My plan for these two is two naughty tooth fairies. Now they're not the kind of tooth fairies that come and take the teeth from under your pillow, they're more like an anti-tooth fairy. So they come round and they dish out sweets trying to rot everybody's teeth so that when the people come around to take the teeth, they're no good for whatever tooth fairies take teeth for. I'm giving the back a buff and getting rid of some serial numbers off the back and then I'm going to be drilling some holes to put those funky joints in that lovely Silver Griffin sent me. I used them on Miss Mantis's video. I'll put a link below so that if you wish to buy some of your own, you can find them there. After I put a little pilot hole in there, I'm going to use a bigger drill bit to make the holes big enough for the little sticky things to go in. And then I'll super glue those in as well. And with my trusty two-part epoxy, I'm going to sculpt some elf ears. It's pretty simple, I'm using the armature to anchor it in, and then I'm just smushing it in and making it a good shape and sculpting some details in with a silicone tool. I'm 
and once I'm happy with the details, I'll move on to the other ear. I'm going to do the same on the other doll as well. I'm not going to show you the whole process because it takes about 20 minutes per ear. Once I'm happy with the shape and detail, I leave it overnight to cure. And once cured, I'm going to paint them into a similar colour. I know they're not the same, but I'm going to fix that with some blushing. Time to root through that box again. Remind myself what I've got and how I'm going to use it all. Yeah, use as much as I can. We've got some funky strings and elastics, sprinkles, lollies, ribbon, gummy bear beads, uh, lots of glitter, some lovely yarn and this fabric. Now I keep coming back to this fabric, it really did throw me. Lee said it was because it reminded her of my froggy doll. So I'm going to make the most of what I can out of it, but it really did throw me. Using the clothes that the dolls came in, because I don't have any patterns for them, I'm going to unpick them and use them as bases for pattern pieces. I couldn't find my quick unpick, so we've got little tiny scissors to the rescue. I do have an unhealthy collection of scissors. Once they're taken apart, I can put them on the fabric and draw out the short pieces that I want. The fabric that the clothes were originally made out of are elasticated and it's got some really weird stretch to it. So a lot of it is sort of guesstimating and pulling it about and making the pattern work. Once I've cut one leg out, I can repeat the process and cut the second one out. I use the same process again for the vest top. I've sketched it out to the same size as the clothes, but when I cut it out, I remember to add some seam allowance so that I've got some space to actually sew it together. I've cut out all the pieces for the various bits of dress and costume I want, but I just did no. Sorry, I tried. I'm going to use this fabric instead. So while I tell myself off mentally for not using something that was in the box, I'm going to make the wings. I've drilled a hole into the ball of the joint and I'm putting an armature wire in there. And then the same way I did Miss Mantis's wings I'm going to be using these pre-printed gauze wings and adding a layer of resin over the top.
give it a quick blast of the power of the thousand suns and then flip it over and do the same on the other side but this time we're going to sandwich in the armature wire and some glitter because i got some glitter in my package and it was gorgeous And with one final layer of thin resin over the top of all of that, I can blast that and repeat it again on all the other wings. Onto the face. I've prepared these faces with a layer of Mr. Super Clear UV flat cut, and I was really impressed with how quickly these ones came together. Both of them only took two layers of MSC and drawing. I was quite impressed with how well the pencils took, and how quickly their faces came together. I start out by sketching out the eye shapes and where I want the eyebrows to be and then I can start building up those colours and building up pastels to give the face some blushing and some depth. I gave this little guy blue eyes um, and I, I'm not sure if it's the colour combination or the contrast with the, the ginger hair but my goodness me his eyes are deep and piercing at the end. I use a little eyelash spoolie to get into all the crooks and crevices of the eyes and the eyebrows and I also use a kneaded eraser to try and sharpen up any edges or any bits where the dust has laid on bits that I don't want to be shaded. Ooh, and I've discovered beauty blenders are really good for buffing out and uh, blending in those pastels as well.
and then we do the same thing on this young lady's face so I'm starting off with the blush this time um, I gave the little guy a sort of mischievous look he's got a bit of a frown to his sculpt so he's got a bit of a, a, a cheeky swagger to him um, this one because I didn't want them to be completely cute uh, she's got a bit of a, a naughty glare in her eye I'm not sure why I gave her pink irises, but it's a bit different and uh, it kind of adds to the cutesy fantasy theme. On the second layer of this guy, I'm just putting more details and more depth into the colour of his eyes. So I'm using a darker colour to go around the edge of the iris and putting some little lines inside it to add a bit of detail and it also shades it slightly. I've also used a slightly darker colour around the outside of the whites of the eye to make them look more spherical.
I also put some more detail into the eyebrows as well by adding some low lights and some highlights in the hairs. So a lighter colour to bring out the fine details and a darker colour to shade them. I promised myself a nice simple repaint job after Miss Mantis, is a bit, she was a bit of an epic journey that one. Um, so I've made myself, it, I don't know, it wasn't particularly easy doing two dolls at the same time. And uh, yeah, I <laughs> wasn't meaning to add any uh, extra bits with the ears and the wings, but here we are. And I'm quite chuffed with how they've turned out. I also realised the last three videos I've um, uploaded, repaint wise, have been quite creepy and quite, uh, I don't know, more serious. And these guys are cuter and I'm curious to know, what kind of thing do you guys prefer? Do you like sweet and cute or, I don't know, a bit more in the normal range or do you prefer the more strange creature creation things like the spider and the mantis? And we mustn't forget to patch up those dodgy mismatched coloured ears. Mm. We're going to give them some blush as well and try and blend those in. Now to finish those eyes off I'm going to use some UV resin and I'm going to coat their eyes so they've got a nice natural shine that catches the light wherever the light's coming from. I'm using a toothpick here, I usually use a pin because I don't want to flood the eye by squeezing it straight out of the bottle so I just use the tiny tip of a pin or a toothpick to coat it and make sure that it doesn't go over where it should be going. Now the bodies are going to be quite uh, on show with these clothes so I'm going to give them a bit of interest by blushing them. I'm going to just put a bit of pink around the joints and the hands, the knees, the toes and I'm going to be giving them some fingernails and some creases in their fingers.
trying to get the fingernails right with the pencils was a, a little difficult because it would only pick up on certain bits um, and I've got sticky things on my hands. So what I did was I scribbled some of the pencil on and then I used some water. Now of course you've got the cat helping. Thank you cat. Uh, we used a bit of water to spread the pigment around and give it a better coverage. On to the hair. I'm using Mr. Super Customs technique of just pulling the yarn because you get a better length out of it and it doesn't need brushing out and flat ironing. Not that I want to flat iron this because I want them to look like candy floss or cupcake frosting, but yes. So we're just pulling it out and I'm stacking it in a pile and then I will be making quick wefts. This technique was, um, I first saw Hexion doing. So I'm using a hot glue gun and I'm just putting a, a line of hot glue across it and then using a silicone tool, smearing it out, making sure I've covered all the hair, going back if I've missed it. And then it's dried and I can trim it down instantly. And ta-da, a weft. And now because I'm impatient, I'm using the hot glue gun again because I'm not making a wig cap because I'm lazy and I'm using the hot glue to stick little bits of hair and the wefts on in the right place. I can use the hot glue gun to reheat the glue and spread it up the scalp so it's not bulky and lumpy. It's really useful, it's a nice quick way of doing it. Here's this little chapel done up and here's the young lady with all of her hair too. I'm going to cut up some of the hair uh, into some flocking so that I can give him what looks like a shaved head around the back of his head, otherwise he's going to be bald.
to stick this on I'm just going to use some tacky glue and then smush it on with my fingers. And then once the glue's dried, I will dust off the excess. We're just going to add a little gummy bear onto this braid. I'm just going to get a bit of wire, loop the hair through, pull it through, and then use a bit of hot glue to stick it in place. To tame some of this floof, I'm going to do a half up, half down thing with a bit of bow in the back to hold it in place. Now for the accessories. Using some of that nice little elastic, we're going to thread these gummy bear beads on and make a... I'm not even sure what it is. A bracelet size thing that will wrap around the little girl's waist and across the arm like some kind of bandolier. Using the ribbon I'm going to make a sash for the young lad and I'm going to sew on some lollipops on it. I've had enough time to stew on the fail that I made which was using the fabric which I was sent which didn't like it. So I'm going to make a waistcoat. Uh, it's a really weird one that kind of loops around the back so I can still put his wings through and I'm using this dusky pink velvet. Again I sketched the pattern shape on and I'm using my little scissors to cut out. I should have used the big scissors because the little scissors kept flopping everywhere. So we're using the big scissors and making sure that we've got some seam allowance. I'm going to cut it all out. Because the fabric's so fine, I have glued the edges down and then I'm going to go over it with some contrasting thread to tack it down and give it a bit of a design focus. Using her little halter top, I'm going to make a halter neck dress. So I'll draw around the halter neck and then I'm going to draw around the skirt that I also made based on the skirt that she had originally and try and mush those together to make a dress. Fold the paper in half so I can ensure that I have got equal shapes on both sides and it's not lopsided and I use her to work out how long I want the dress to be. And I'm also going to be using one of these bags as an overdress. Now it's all cut out I'm going to glue the seam edges again and then what I've done is I've used one of these bags and picked the edges and then cut out some petal shapes. For some reason, my camera didn't record it the first time around. And then I'm gonna tie that around her waist. Now the waistcoat's all dried and sewn up, I'm going to add some little buttons from my own stash. close up the dress at the back I'm going to use a press stud and then sew another button at the back to hide it. Using a ribbon from one of the bags I'm going to sew this onto the top and use it as the tie for the halter dress. I realised I'm going to have to make the accessories on top of the clothes so I can't do the sort of big reveal put together at the end so I'm putting them together as I go and building up all of the accessories as I go and build them up on top of the costumes 
so that I make them right the first time. And just slip the little baggy thing over the top, tie it up at the back, and she's got a little petal dress made out of one of the sweet bags. And here are their base outfits. I plaited some of the brightly coloured thread and tied on some of these little sweet charms and then using the weird sweetie gummy bear bracelet thing wrapped that around her so she's covered in gummy bears and those are her accessories. And this chap is having something similar but I'm going to have to sew all these things onto him first. I tried making a double layer of ribbon and making little pockets for the lollies but it was just too far too fiddly so we're just stitching them straight on and making loops out of the thread itself. It was quite difficult to do because I kept trying to slide out and at the end of it, because they kept popping out and were a pain in the ass to get back in, I added a drop of super glue and they are stuck in there forever. To echo his little friend's belt, we are making a similar braided belt and we're going to stick some of these giant lollies on it, um, more naughty treats to rot those teeth. Now their accessories are done, I can stick their heads back on. I heat them up with a hairdryer and then smush them on without breaking anything. Well, trying. And now for sprinkles. I have got some watered down Mod Podge and I sprinkle the sprinkles, sprinkly sprinkles, sprinkle the sprinkles into the watered down Mod Podge, mush them all about and then smush them into their hair. Hopefully that little layer of Mod Podge will help it stick and so they don't fall out and go everywhere. Her little friend gets the same treatment but with the chunky shapes. Uh, they look like cupcake sprinkles and uh, after that I can smash those wings back into those sockets. The wings pop into the sockets quite nicely and you can move and pivot them around and uh, put them into different positions. They're really useful little things and thank you so much again Silver Griffin for sending them to me. You're a star. And with that they're done. Here are their photos.
thank you again to all my other lovely collaborators. We've got Insanely Creates, Lucia's Strange Universe, Doliana, Shelby KG, Everything Eden and Heliophobia Dolls. All the links are below and I don't know, what should we call them? Please give your suggestions down below, like, subscribe and all that jazz and I'll see you in the comments. Love you guys. Thank you.